What's up guys, it's Visario here and this is the review of a phone that's gotten nearly everyone talking about cameras and selfies. When Techno launched the Camon CX, the main talking point was the camera and you can tell that by all the campaigns going on, especially the CX selfie challenge. So you've seen all the unboxing videos, you've probably read a few articles, but what are the major highlights of the CX? What is the CX actually capable of? Without further ado, here are 7 things to know before you buy the Camon CX. I'll start with the design. If there's anything I heard more often than not using this device, it's that the CX has got a great body that's very attractive. The CX is sporting a glossy front and shiny bezels on the sides, which is very hard to miss. I personally like the shiny blade-like edges and the very glossy screen, even though it can be a fingerprint magnet sometimes, but that's just a wipe away. Here with me I have the champagne gold variant, it also comes in purple, sky grey, pink and gold. The huge screen size had a little getting used to for me. Coming from a smaller form factor like the iPhone 6s, I had to reach all the way up or adjust the phone in my hand to reach the top corners of the phone if I wanted to use it one handed. For the most part, I still had to use two hands to operate this phone. The CX comes with a very bright display and the colors really pop out well. The display felt so good to look at, at the same time, it started looking a bit more saturated, which is cool depending on what you like, but I think many people are going to be fine by this. Another part of the overall design is the software. HiOS is Techno's variant for a skin on Android. It's also got a lot of improvements and some very slick animations on Android 7.0. If you're an avid Android user, you're not going to need any getting used to for this device. For a device with a 5.5 inch display with 1920 by 1080 pixels, it's very obvious that these animations affect the battery life, which is why the animations are automatically turned off in the power saving mode. Other than that, the animations look pretty slick and I didn't find anything to dislike about it. For a quick rundown of the specs, if you've seen the what to expect video I made earlier, I talked about a few true and rumored specs that will come with the device. But what are the actual specs on the CX? The CX comes bundled with a 16GB storage and 2GB RAM as compared to 3GB on the C9 and to 2GB storage. But the good thing is that the storage on the CX is expandable to 128GB with the memory card. I may not be right but I'm thinking Techno sacrificed the RAM to make up for the slickness or thinness if you will of this phone. A quick test with Geekbench shows you that yes this device is specced out and this is kind of a good thing because it affects the browsing performance and many day to day activities. So yes this also justifies the octa-core processor because many of what I threw at it were pretty fast in terms of response time. The CX also comes with a non-removable battery of 3200 mAh. For comparison, the C9 was 2700 and the iPhone 7 Plus is 2900. What really matters though is the battery life, and battery life on the CX during my test was great so far. I hardly had a battery low signal until I used it lightly for about 2 days, and then for days of really heavy use with gaming, Instagram, browsing, and using both cameras, I had only about 7 hours before getting a low battery warning and having to charge up again. The CX also boasts of fast charging, which I can tell you really works. It took a really short while to get from 40 to 95% on a single charge and that was pretty impressive. One feature I found myself using more was the ultra power saving mode. This mode limits you to only 6 apps that Techno thinks you will need. You get an estimated 12 hours but once the ultra mode is activated you get an extra hour or minutes. I found myself using this a lot, maybe because it was my daily driver for a few short days but as another functional device I say this is a very worthy feature. The fingerprint reader on the back is also a very welcome feature. For one, it's super convenient. I found myself using it more often than not as well and it also serves as a shutter button. This alone makes the selfie game way easier and even more convenient. So to the feature you're probably waiting to see, the camera on the CX. The CX is rocking a 16 megapixel camera on the back and on the front with a 2.0 aperture and a wide lens. The shots I took on the CX were pretty decent as well and the selfies made me even look more beautified. One thing I noted though, even before comparison was that the shots were a bit more saturated. For instance, comparing it with my iPhone 6s, which seemed to look more natural in a way, the CX actually pops out the colors and tells a more quote unquote beautified story. I'll give a honorable mention to the multitasking feature of the CX. I actually stumbled upon this feature by accident, but I think it's one of those features you might be using only a few times. The pre-orders for the Kamen CX already began, but during launch, around $190 US dollars was displayed, which is approximately 78,000 naira. But we'd have to wait to see when it goes on sale. So that's been it, guys. If I place this device, it would be one to watch. The camera is great, high OS is slick, and the body is very attractive, unless you use a pouch. The fast charge works, and for the mid-range phone, I say it's worth it. 
Thank you for watching. Please like if you enjoyed this video and don't forget to subscribe if you want to see more videos like this. Please leave a comment if you have any questions. Thank you so much for watching and I'll talk to you guys in the next one.